presenter for this session is the coordinator for outputs 2 and 3 of the Arise Plus Philippines. So meron ang nagtanong kahapon habang nagpre-prepare kami, what is outputs 2 and 3? Hopefully we'll get to know what that is. And uh, the topic is Arise Plus Philippines and the International Trade Center. It was already mentioned, but maybe we didn't all catch it. But it was mentioned earlier today that the International Trade Center actually supported this activity, including with funding, you know, party. So, uh, without further ado, let's all welcome Ms. Anne Daisy Omega. Thank you. Uh, I have the option of standing there or here, but I have some body to ah. I'm not the same uh, speakers from Kanina, Nagalay, no? but I'm hard act to follow. So me, with my body goes. So, um, the rest plus, I would like to thank you first, uh, all of you for being here. And uh, also, I would like to thank uh, IDBI and NML for giving us the opportunity to introduce the project to you. So let me talk. Let me talk about the Arise Plus Philippines project. So the Arise Plus Philippines is a project of the government. It has the Department of Trade Industry. Sorry, I'm adjusting the microphone. Um, so it's the Department of Trade and Industry, which is the lead partner for this project. And we also have other partner agencies made up of the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Customs, uh, Food and Drug Administration, as well as the private sector. So it's a government and private sector uh, partnership. This is fun the project is funded by the European Union. And uh, it has the International Trade Center, uh, which was mentioned earlier by Director Mita, that uh, it is uh, the one who is uh, the funding support. But actually, it's called the technical agency of the project. So it's actually the U.S.D. funds. So um, just to give you the project overview, uh, the overall objective of the project is to foster inclusive economic growth and poverty reduction in the country by improving the country's trade performance and competitiveness. So how does it aim to achieve those things? Uh, we have actually, as Ms. Carmela mentioned earlier, we have five outputs. The uh, mention yung output two, output three, which actually is uh, about quality and standard. So related dito yung workshop that we have right now. Uh, so the first output is uh, uh, government and private operators are better able to identify and implement export priorities. So well, um, my other slides will be uh, giving you some information about the activities that are being done under these particular outputs. So output two is a national uh, setting up a national quality infrastructure that promotes export competitiveness Output 3, uh, quality management and control systems for exported food products are better aligned with international best practices. Uh, output 4 is on strengthening trade facilitation capacity to implement the Customs Modernization and Tariffs Act and the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. And the fifth output is actually monitoring and advertising widely the achievements of the EU Philippines Partnership to the Philippines. So, um, uh, this is a four-year project. We are actually almost finishing the second year. So, it started in March 2021. Uh, so, ang year, ano niya, reckoning niya, March to February. So, that's one year. So, uh, the third year will be starting soon in March. Um, so as uh, Ms. Carmela has mentioned, this, uh, this particular workshop that we have right now is funded by the project. And aside from funding, uh, providing support for the logistics side of the workshop, we also uh, 
help in the review of the metrology bill. So, um, I, I, I'm not sure if uh, the consultant that was top uh, for helping uh, NML in reviewing the metrology bill is here, but uh, he, he is a national consultant, he is a Filipino consultant who was helping the project on that side. So as you will learn later, and I think that was also discussed earlier, um, about the quality infrastructure, you remember Kalina, um, Adrian was mentioning about uh, a digital infrastructure. So in a way, in quality infrastructure then, uh, it's composed of standards, metrology, accreditation, conformity assessment. Uh, so this makes up the quality infrastructure na isang ba, na isang country. Um, conformity assessment uh, is made up of testing, inspection, certification, market surveillance. So these are uh, these are activities na under the conformity assessment uh, side ng uh, NQI. So how does the Philippine the Arise Plus project support the Philippine exporters. As I have said earlier na, uh, ang pinakamain objective naman talaga ng project is to foster inclusive economic growth and poverty reduction in the country. So, ito yung mga support na ginagawa natin. One is on improving export market access. I have said kanina na we have five outputs, di ba? So, output one actually is involved with improving market access. So, ang aim niya is to inform businesses, especially MSME exporters, and global trade opportunities and market access. Ang involved dito na focal point ay ang DPI, the Department of Trade and Industry, particularly yung Export Marketing Bureau. Uh, so, trade and market intelligence, including market support, export management coaching, and building market linkages, uh, is one way also to improve export market access as well as trade and investment policy, enabling trade and investment policy environment through public-private dialogue and policy study, as well as promoting inclu inclusive innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. So another uh, support to the Philippine exporters is increasing export competitiveness and the quality of exported food products. Ito po ulit pumapasok yung ginagawa natin ngayon uh, because uh, under Output 2, which is on the NQI, which I mentioned earlier po, uh, marami po siyang range of activities. Uh, there are two main clusters, yung, ano, yung Output 2, na sa work plan niya. Ang una is on focusing on the technical regulatory aspects such as the review and drafting of NQI law and ancillary regulation. So, the mention ko po kanina, di ba? We also supported the review of the metrology bill. So, that is part of that. Uh, another naman po is, uh, aside from the metrology bill, meron din po sa accreditation bill. So, uh, we have here uh, representatives from PAP, uh, Director James Impeno, and Director, uh, Assistant Director Nani Janisha. So, they are the ones actually who are providing uh, they're heading the output to working groups ng project and they are the ones that uh, are actively involved in output to activities. So, ang ginagawa po under this particular uh, support is promoting quality infrastructure and standards to boost export and another one is providing capacity building support to exporters and food safety best practices and international standards. Diba naalala niyo po kanina si Ms. Aleni, she mentioned na maraming mga detention cases, diba? So, one way of supporting our exporters is providing them the necessary infrastructure. For example, um, meron na bang mga available mga testing laboratories here that could do the testing for our exporters. Or meron na ba itong mga like calibration, uh, the one laboratories that are uh, involved in uh, doing the calibration of equipment na hindi na ba nila kailangan pumunta pa ng abroad na available na siya dito. So, those are uh, things na kasama sa iniisip na gusto mong i-provide ng project. So, so, the last support is an improving trade facilitation procedures and connectivity to international markets. 
So this is more of a customs activity. So uh, more of the Bureau of Customs and Justice. So capacitate customs authorities, trade regulators, and economic operators on modern rules and management of export trade procedures. So, mapapasin niya yung support, ano no, uh, wide-ranging siya. Uh, market access, uh, related sa quality, tapos customs naman. So, tatlong, parang tatlong magkakaibang mga activities. But actually, although those are different activities, ang pinaka-main aim naman talaga is improving yung, uh, yung ano, trade performance ng bansa. And uh, may, may cross-cutting topic siya to promote sustainability and inclusiveness. So, at the end of the day, although li limang magkakaibang ano yun, limang magkakaibang expected results or outputs, eto pa rin yung mga topics na nag-rule dun sa limang yun. So, una, MSMEs as the final beneficiary. So, ang alam po natin, 99.5 ng mga establishments sa Pilipinas ay binubuo po ng mga MSMEs. So talagang kung isipin mo, ilan lang yung ano, ilan lang talaga yung mga large uh, establishments. So talagang kung matulungan mo yung mga local, yung ating mga uh, MSMEs, uh, including women and youth businesses, ay malaking bagay po yun. So lahat po ng ginagawa na project, lahat ng work plan niya, has this end in mind. And another po is gender and youth empowerment. So ang yung gender equality pa na hindi lang puro mga ano lang, lala, mga men lang ang binibigyan ng opportunities or priority. So, gender equality talaga siya na ang may mga activities na women, ano, women empowered. So, actually, pag tinignan po sa mga reports na ginagawa ng project, binibilang po siya. Ilan po yung babae, ilan yung lalaki, ilan yung nakapag-avail ng mga youth na gana. So, Gano sila ka-particular. Gusto talaga nilang ma-identify na it's just not other say that it should be gender and youth empowerment. Gusto din nilang talagang na nakikita nila from the attendance sheet, so from the people that you invite to the workshops or the activities, uh, talagang involved yung mga women and youth. So, may mga specific activities targeting youth entrepreneurs. Uh, last, like last November, they have this accelerator, accelerator booster uh, wherein uh, they uh, train uh, mga youth entrepreneurs. So, kasama po yun dun sa, sa ginagawa nilang activity under Output 1. And there are also linkages with initiatives supporting women entrepreneurs. Green growth is more on uh, including and promoting environmental principles across activities. I mentioned it kanina ni uh, Adrian about the Philippine Development Plan. Kasama po kasi sa, is kasama din sa Philippine Development Plan, yung ecological integrity and a clean and healthy environment. So, ano rin po yan, uh, connected din siya dun sa pinaka gusto i-attend ng IP at ma-achieve sa project. And of course, COVID-19 related dahil uh, kapagaling lang natin sa pandemic and we, we were obviously affected economically, health-wise. So, uh, kinukonsider din po nila yun in the activities na ginagawa under COVID-19. So, let me uh, introduce to you then about IPC. Uh, the IPC means International Trade Center. It is a joint agency of the UN or the United Nations and the World Trade Organization. Uh, siya lang po yung, ano, siya lang po yung UN Development Agency na fully dedicated to support the internationalization of MSNP. So, ang marami po silang Marami po silang ina-assist ng mga countries, hindi lang po dito sa Asia, hindi lang po sa ASEAN, kundi pati po sa Africa, sa Europe. Uh, so, yun ang kanilang mga activities na pinang provide. At nabanggit din po kanina ni... <laughs> Lagi po niya rinig kay Adrian. Doon po kasi nakita rin itong Sustainable Development Goals ng UN. Uh, ang aim po talaga, ang sinusuportahan po talaga din ng IPC is uh, poverty reduction, which is number one sustainable development, SDG or sustainable development goal. Uh, number eight, decent uh, work and economic growth. And uh, 
medyo may malabo na yun. Uh, reduce and equality. So, marami, marami po yung mga sustainable development goals that are being um, supported by the International Trade Center. <laughs> Nakatingin pa ako sa ito. Sorry. Uh, so, yun po, na, yun po yung ano, may kukwento ko po tungkol sa, sa uh, Arise Plus Philippine Project. And hopefully po, uh, with uh, yung activities po namin, like um, with the accreditation bill that is being uh, pushed na rin, uh, that we will be all, we will be coordinating with uh, Senate and Congress on this particular aspect. And possibly, we will also be doing promotion work uh, with more on informing awareness uh, Activities not so. This one was done in metrology. Uh, it, for the other uh, aspects of uh, the national quality infrastructure, such as on, such as on accreditation, on standardization, for which bills are also being uh, drafted, uh, we could be coordinating also with other sectors uh, on this, so that we could uh, inform you, give you more information about. Uh, what are being done in these particular aspects of the uh, NQI or the National Quality Infrastructure. And hopefully, um, we could also, like the ones lead Kalina, um, we could be able to impart to you what really, why is it really important uh, that we know and be involved in these activities. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, you have